Good afternoon. Welcome to Audio Tree Live. It is Wednesday, July 25th, 2018, and we are honored to have in the studio Birds in Row. Take it away, guys.
Birds in a row on Audio Tree Live. How are you guys doing? Good. Hey, good. Sounds fucking awesome in here. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start off by talking about uh, the producer who you guys work with on, is it every release? Uh, yeah, every single one. Every it's, single one. It's his brother. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Sovi. okay, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to ask, um, to what degree do you consider him a member of the band? Yeah, like it's uh, already a brother from, to me. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, yeah, like um, it's for, like for it's the one who always uh, has good advice, like good advices about gears even before we start composing. Okay. So the whole uh, like once we have a small uh, small part of songs already uh, composed, we already show it to him, and so he kind of build the songs together with us till until the, the studio session. And uh, we did like for this album, we did like three pre-production. Okay. We took the time to record the three first song, then the two other one, then the uh, the other one. Like two months uh, in between every uh, sessions. Yeah. And then we recorded the the whole album. So yeah, he's a uh, he may make really part of the this album. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like with you the whole time. Yeah, he's been record he's, re he's been recording every single song that we ever recorded and uh, he started doing it at the same time we started as a band. So it's kind of like we grew up together. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up as a band because he, he brought a lot of things to us, but also he learned a lot of things in his job by like starting this like full time. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird relationship where uh, where we can listen to the record and be like, oh, that was that moment where you were using that microphone or that, mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever, press it or whatever. Uh, yes, yeah, it, for me, it's really like the fourth member of the band for real. Like, as, as we said, he, he gives a lot of good advices. And, uh, I, guess, and I guess he knows better than us how we have to sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's beautiful. He's a producer, <laughs> no? That's awesome. And Timmy, Timmy, Timmy and I and, and him, we started music together. The, okay. three, the three of us were our first band. And he's, so, ba and he's back in your hometown, hometown right now, yeah. I'm assuming? Yeah. You know Laval, you, yeah. Is he watching right now? Uh, I hope so. If, you, if he's not, uh, yeah. Hopefully. He's probably Ma catch up on Maybe YouTube not because he's always working. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. So maybe not, but... Uh, I'm not even sure what time it is at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah, going to show it to him later. I actually don't know what it is either. So you guys, this is your fourth U.S. tour. And uh, you, ju you guys played a couple of shows with Converge? Uh, yeah, we played five shows with Converge and Neurosis on, at the beginning of that tour. Yeah. How were they? Well, <laughs> different. Uh, yeah, different. Like, we used to play in basements and caves or like small rock clubs, but that was very different. And just playing with the legendary bands like them, uh, we've already toured with Converge in um, 2K12, but Neurosis is like, yeah. I mean, like, it's one of my favorite bands. And, uh, and seeing them play every single night. And even more seeing them being like awesome human beings. Yeah. Like very welcoming and helpful. And uh, that was, yeah, that was that was something very very crazy. And that was also our first tour bus tour. Like that was the very first That's time. That's crazy. We, like, yeah, because I saw you guys and uh, I'm sorry, the other band you're on tour with. Uh, pull, Portrayal of Guilt. Yeah, Portrayal of Guilt. Pull up in one 15 passenger van. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how we do usually. Like That's, I mean, damn. You've got to you've got to eat the economical aspect of it. I guess you have to be careful to not lose your money because you don't make a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, totally. So so from that tour, if you could say like there was one thing that you learned, for, even though it was only five days, like mm. spending time with people who have been doing this for 20 years. Uh, it's just what, that one thing. I, I say stay humble, because that that's I mean, Converse have have changed. The shape of his of this music since Jendo to me and Neurosis even like further past that I mean like it was mm -hmm. like uh, in the 90s when they started really like creating their sound and uh, and they're still like very humble persons and they I don't know they they just act human and that's something that we try to do with the band as well is like we hate this um, barrier that you build between the band and the audience like when you're on stage or or I don't know when you put some kind of hierarchy in it. And seeing those bands that have been doing that for like 20 plus years and still not giving a shit about this barrier is very, very impressive and important. Yeah, I think that was the hard part of these shows because we created the barriers ourselves because <laughs> we were fan of the band and we were like sleeping just next to them. And so it was hard for us to just see that they, they wouldn't, they won't act differently. Mm -hmm. So we have to not act differently neither. So that was a bit, <laughs> That's kind uh, of a you odd know. Moment. Yeah, yeah, wow. 
Well, that's a beautiful answer, staying <laughs> humble. Cool. Well, you guys can go into your next set. Sure. Loudness and nonsense, the breeze on your hands, choking your phone cracks. Perfume on the dust, found the rest. I lost all my friends somewhere between your teeth and nails, and the strangers won't crash. I dream of a world where the bridge won't sing We sing your text from your ex I know I'm tired We both go down to hell This is beating black clouds all over your head It's fair you're rushing the air Put it in my last in a row on Audio Tree Live. So this being your fourth U.S. tour and you guys have fully embraced this DIY mentality to what I would consider almost like the fullest um, and I'm a big fan of that but what are some of the challenges of touring internationally especially for your fourth time? Uh, that's a lot of organization. <laughs> yeah. You need to uh, you need to be ready uh, and also like you have to embrace the um, uh, Culture, cultural differences, basically, um, because like being in Europe and being in the U.S. is not the same when you're on tour, um, and obviously it costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's way easier to depart from your hometown with a van than just like take a flight, uh, fill all the papers, and pay for it, and, uh, and and come here and play some shows. So um, yeah, it's pretty hard. I think that's where like. Yeah, that's why it's hard to find the balance between like uh, doing the things um, not for money at all, but still needing money at the end of the tour because like you have to pay all the bills that you that the tour is bringing. So usually when we're in Europe, bills are pretty low because we know how to make them low. But when you have to take a flight, when you have to pay visas, uh, when you have to ship anything anywhere, it, it costs a lot of money. So that's basically I think the the very big difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, it makes you feel very foreign as well. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah, imagine. Sorry, go ahead. We're trying to be smart about 
um, being able to keep doing this, mm -hmm. so not like screwing up every everything that could um, could give us uh, enough money to keep on doing it as yeah. well. So, but sometimes it's like a, yeah, a bit hard when you don't expect, uh, you don't know what everything's gonna cost, like uh, when you sure. fly. Uh, <laughs> it like seems here. to me like <laughs> even though you guys, you know, work with Deathwish on your releases, you guys still operate as like a single entity business. Is that true? So it, you can take out the word business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like well, when I not, mean, well, I guess when I say business, yeah. I mean you. You said already it's like you, you don't want the money, but you need the money. Otherwise, you yeah. can't do this. Like we, we kind of want the money, but it's just that in the in the like not not in not at any cost. That's what we mean. Like uh, you need money to do this. You need it, or you're very privileged. Uh, and I feel we're already privileged to be on a label like Deathwish that is so supportive to mm -hmm. us. But you you need the money to do all of this. You you have to pay the gas. You have to pay the van. You have to pay all the merch. You, all that is just yeah, just just a lot of money. So you have to do it. But uh, for us, uh, uh, belonging to the DIY scene means that there's a, some part of ethics in it, uh, and that we try to keep. Like, we try to sell our merch with no fixed prices. So like, people just give money. That, that's a donation. Uh, it's just for us uh, a way to make them understand that the money that they give for a shirt is not like buying a shirt at H&M or whatever. It's like giving some money to a band so they can keep on going on the road. Um, and that's the kind of ethics we try to apply to all of this, uh, keeping in mind that, yeah, we need the money and we need to, we want to do that as long as we can and we don't want to get jaded or fed up with it just because we didn't manage well all this money thing. Sure, yeah. So then, I mean, coming over like in, our political climate has got to also be something that is a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah like, I mean, you say you felt like, a, you feel like a foreigner. Is that is that something you know that a lot of bands in your position feel when they come here? Or is that like a I unique think, experience to you? I think if you if you just need to travel to feel it. Uh, okay. Uh, and it's been it's been a while. Like, yeah, it's our fourth tour here. And every time we felt like, when you when you cross a border, you feel guilty no matter what. <laughs> you, you've got something that, I don't know, they're looking for or something like that, you know, so you, um, you, you, you may try to be as legal as you want and stuff, you will still be a, a foreigner and, uh, and that's something that I think is part of our um, politics or a political point of view is that that's what border creates, it creates a lot of fear, it creates uh, it, it pushing people out of, you know, those like little limits and um, so yeah, for a band like us, that's, that's what it means, like y you can get if you're not legal, for example, you can get caught on the border and, yeah. and banned for like 5, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. even may, m maybe go to jail or something like that. And even more in, in this political climate, like recent. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, but in terms of political climate, we're not way better in Europe. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't well, a lot of uh, lessons to give, but yeah, but yeah it's kind of crazy here. <laughs> it is kind of crazy here. I, I think a lot of us are feeling it. So, I mean, I think your ideas of keeping it safe and smart, and mm. that's probably the best policy for a band like you. And working with a label like Deathwish seems to be the perfect solution to a label because they let you operate as a DIY entity, mm. and I yeah. think that's just that's just great of them. They're, really. they're, when we say we're, they're very supportive, it's they're supportive on every aspect. Like they understand our ethos and they let us apply them to our band's life. And, um, and they still give us the tools to do this. Like, we wouldn't yeah. be here if it wasn't for Deathwish, really. Other labels so, should take note of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't know how all labels work. You know, you can't really judge by the yeah. cover. But, like, we've, we've been very lucky and privileged to have them uh, behind our back for, like, a bunch of years now. So. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, you guys can take it into your next two songs. Um, I will say that they are playing at Subterranean Downstairs tonight. Yeah in yeah. Chicago, so if you're in town, go check them out. I think tickets still are still at the door. Uh, yeah, yeah, he sure. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're like, sure, I, it doesn't matter, just show up, we'll get you in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll find a way. <laughs>
birds in a row on Audio Tree Live. I want to just end this quickly with a rapid fire around the room. Piece of gear you can't live without. It, can't, it could be here in the room or it could be back home. Uh, my guitar. Like I've tried a lot of guitars and I always break strings, but not that one. It's kind of a, it's kind of haunting me. <laughs> Sweet. Um, not my bass, but <laughs> my guitar actually. But really? I don't use it now, so okay. I'm, okay. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. You? No idea. Nothing. You're like, I'll, I'll fucking hit pots and pans. It doesn't matter to me. He's a citizen of the world. Okay, beautiful. Cool. Yeah, me. <laughs> okay, you. That's, that's a good answer. Well, Birds in the Row, thank you guys for coming in. Um, their album, We Already Lost the World, is out now on Death Wish, Re Death Wish Records. You can get it on their band camp everywhere at Spotify. I was listening to it earlier. It's awesome. Uh, check them out tonight at Sub T downstairs with Portrayal of Guilt. And thank you to our camera crew, audio crew, Everyone's setting everything up, making it sound and look beautiful. If you want to connect with us as the band, you can find us on all social media platforms. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you. All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?